Hi, Dr. Goodwin. Hello. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. How are you today? Okay. Uh, I'm pleased that we're going to have a chance to talk today about uh, medicine cabinet makeovers. Um, I want my Health Power audience to know that you are a pharmacist and professor of pharmacy and therapeutics, that you've been featured on multiple media programs, including the Today Show, uh, Good Morning America, CBS National News, and NPR, as well as many other programs. Uh, we want our audience to mark their calendars now to address leftover over-the-counter products and prescriptions in their medicine cabinets. And uh, we are greatly appreciative to have an expert such as you tell, tell our audience how to do that. Some questions. Why is it important to clean out the medicine cabinet every few months, and how do we decide what to keep and what to toss? Great question. Uh, I like to think of maybe every time there's a change of season, you should go through your medicine cabinet and, and purge the bad stuff and, and keep the good stuff. Uh, look for expiration dates. If the drug is expired, get rid of it. If you have just two or three left, it's not, not good to keep those around because say if it's an antibiotic, it won't do you any good for that next time when you need an antibiotic. And then I'd, I'd like to suggest to you also that maybe, maybe our medicine cabinet isn't the best place to keep medications. That seems kind of ironic, doesn't it, because of the name of it. But think of all the heat and the moisture in the bathroom. Uh, that's not very good for medications. And then also our, our medicine cabinets aren't childproof, so they're potentially very dangerous places for small children. Okay. So the medicine cabinet may not be the best place for medicine. They, you know, ironically, that's the case. And, and I know people say it's really convenient, but I think we need to rethink that and maybe do a strategy where we can put them in a better place. Such as? Well, keep things up and out of the reach of children. Make sure it's a place that is convenient for you because you don't want to forget to take your medications. Uh, so whether it be a kitchen cupboard or whether it be a high uh, a shelf in your closet in your bedroom or someplace that's dry and not under the influence of of heat and moisture in the bathroom and think maybe as, as a grandparent. Some grandparents have young children over and have a lot of medication. You need to keep those away from those small children because they're very attracted to them. Okay. And what are some everyday basics that we should stock up on? Yeah, there are, there are three that I really like and, and promote actually. Uh, the first one is Colgate Total Advanced Health Mouthwash. And what I like to say to your, your audience is that the foundation of good health is good oral hygiene. And with this particular product, it's very powerful, and it's two parts. If you shake it up, this formula goes together, creates this powerful mouthwash that will actually remove 24 times more bacteria than, say, a traditional mouthwash. And when you expectorate it into the sink, you'll actually see the evidence. Another one, <clears throat> now that's kind of a preventative one. Here's one if you do have a cold, are coldy zinc lozenges. Zinc is the number, this particular product is the number one recommended by my fellow pharmacists. And zinc gluconate, which is the active ingredient in it, actually reduces the duration of a cold. So it's, you know how miserable you get when you have a cold? Wouldn't it be nice to knock some time off rather than being sick for a week? Maybe you knock it down by a few days and feel better faster. So I, I think it's really important to have, have that in anticipation of a cold because, you know, we're going to have two or three or four colds every, every winter, it seems like. And then the, the last thing that I think is kind of important for people to consider is to have a probiotic in their, their medicine cabinet. And probiotics are, are basically uh, capsules that contain billions of bacteria, but they're friendly bacteria. And when we become ill, sometimes our unfriendly bacteria are the ones that take over our digestive tracts. And we have some very discomforting times when our just digestive tract isn't working properly. Uh, <clears throat> People always ask me, what's the best one I should take? They see the CFU rating, and I suggest to them there's a, a great website out called swansonvitamins.com. If you go there, you can take a quiz, and it will give you uh, a recommendation, given your age, your condition, and so on, what probiotic might be good and best for you so you can maintain good immune health. 
Were you suggesting a particular website? Uh, yeah, it's swansonvitamins.com. Uh, people can go to and take that quiz. It's a very, very cool uh, quiz to take and I think be very uh, instructive for your, uh, your viewers and listeners. Right, okay. Now, where should we store our medicines to ensure they don't degrade? Well, you know, there's not a single place in the house that I can recommend because every home is different, but I always recommend keeping them up and out of the reach of children and in a dry place so you don't have extremes of temperatures. So you need to decide where in your home the best location is. Okay. And uh, where is the best, what, what's the best thing to do with leftover prescriptions? Well, that's a great question. And uh, we don't want to throw them down the toilet. We don't want to put them in the garbage can because your pet dog or your cat might get into them or your grandchildren or your child. Uh, look for a community medication take back program. And the best advice is probably contact your local pharmacist that you trust and ask your pharmacist where would be the best place to dispose of, of these unwanted, expired, uh, unnecessary medications. They'll be very helpful in, in, in helping you make those decisions. I see. And, and you, no, but you normally dispose of them in the home or at the pharmacy? No, I, the pharmacist will tell you where, but they generally will tell you to bring them to the pharmacy or to take them to a community take-back program where you see maybe on weekends they have uh, – uh, take back and people come and dump all their medications and then those are destroyed properly so that they can't contaminate the environment or hurt anyone or be responsible for substance abuse for example i see okay all right that's good to know so are there any uh, last points that we want to make uh if you had to give one or two key points that we want to leave with our audience, what would they be? Sure. I, I would direct uh, all your viewers and listeners to go to uh, our website, Better Stuff for Life, F-O-R-Life.com, and that will basically give you a summation of everything you and I have talked about today and, and give them some good advice about medications to take and, and how to uh, dispose of unwanted medications. And it's called Better Life? Was uh, better, better, better Stuff for Life.com. Oh, com and it starts with www, of course. That's right. Yes, indeed. Okay, www.betterstuffforlife.com. Right, exactly. Okay, well, I certainly enjoyed talking with you today. I'm sure our audience will appreciate getting this information from you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Goodwood. I enjoyed being with you as well. Okay, have a good day. Thanks, you too. Bye.